Okay, conceptually, I will help you understand this conceptually, but let's start with the practical first. It says the rate, hey, rate, guys, you don't know what rate means? Rate should be the biggest, like, bell ringing word in calculus for you. Slope. Yeah, slope. Okay, the rate at which water flows out of a pipe in gallons per hour is given by the differential function r of time t. So look over here at this table. This r is a derivative function. If it helps you, you should write right above that r that that is f prime because you want to remember that that is a derivative function. So that all these numbers underneath it are rates. Okay, those are rates. Those are slopes. All right, let's continue. The table above, actually it's to the right, uh, shows the rate as measured every three hours for a 24-hour period. Now that's pretty obvious. It, got, it counts by threes right here. Okay, cool. Now let's see what the first question says. It says, use a midpoint Riemann sum with four sub-intervals of equal length. Oh, I love that. I love when it's equal length. To approximate this. Do you guys know what this thing means? This thing means the area underneath the curve, and our curve is capital R. Yeah, so what we're doing, our job right now, is to find an estimated solution to this. So wait, I should go like this, approximately. So we're trying to find a, an a, a estimated solution there. And we're going to use Riemann sums for that. The rest of this question says, using correct Unix, explain the meaning of your answer in terms of the water flow. Okay, let's pause on that question. Let's do this question first. Let's find the midpoint Riemann sum. Now, I would use the table if this was my FRQ and I was just doing it and I knew I was going to get graded. But uh, since I'm explaining it to you guys, I'm going to draw um, an x and y axis to help you guys see what um, what's going on. So let me uh, let me put all my my n x numbers on this x axis really quick. Okay, so there's all our our numbers, and just to help out with the visual, I'm going to put my points up here. So at zero, we're at nine point six. Let's say this is nine point six right there. We'll call this nine point six. And then every other point after this, I'm just going to kind of reference it to 9.6. So 3 goes up to 10.4, so that should be a little bit higher. 6 goes up to 10.8, so that's a little bit higher than 10.4. Then we have 11.2, and then 11.4, uh, which is actually slightly higher than that. And then we have 15 is at 11.3, so that's going a little low. doesn't have to be exact, but, you know, this is just a visual. Help us out here. We have 10.7, and then 10.2, and then finally back down to 9.6. Okay, so um, here is our graph. These are the only points that you see. And remember, this is R of T, uh, a.k.a. derivative graph. This is our rate graph. All right, so our job is to find the midpoint Riemann sum for this, and here is your graph. Oh, check this out. Check that out. Okay, how many subintervals? All right, so I have four, 24 divided by 4, so that would be every 6 hours. Every 6 hours. So um, here we go, right here, right here, um, right here. Wait, is that right? Every 6, uh, 12, 18, and then 24, right? So there's 6 intervals. Okay, the height of this first rectangle is going to go through the middle point. So I'm going to go whoosh, down. And then here's the other midpoint, so I'm going to go through that point and then complete my rectangle. There's my other midpoint, complete my rectangle, and there's my other mid midpoint. You're just finding the area of every single rectangle, and you're adding them together. So what is the base of every single rectangle? Since we have an equal width, the base of every single rectangle is 6. Okay, so that means I have to multiply to 6 every single height. What's the height of this first one? 10.4 plus 6 what's the height of the next one? 9 that would be 11.2 you guys see how I'm getting my heights? 6 times now what's the midpoint of this one? Uh, it's 15 so 15 would be 11.3 and the last one 6 times so 6 is our base and our height is going to be 21 21 where are we at 21? 10.2, so I'm going to put 10.2 right here. You just had to crunch these numbers, and you found your midpoint Riemann sum. There's a shorter way to write this. I didn't do it because I wanted you guys to follow along with me. 
Uh, I could have just went 6 times 10.4 plus 11.2 plus 11.3 plus 10.2. And so you can add all those up first and then multiply it by 6 and you would get the same answer. This is your approximate area. Okay, so what's the approximate area equal to? Well, after we do this, we would find um, our answer. All right, so we got 258.6. And that is roughly the area underneath the curve. So what does this mean? That's what this next question says. This question says, the next part of this question says, using correct units, explain the meaning of your answer in terms of water flow. Now, let's go back to this being an F prime graph. You guys remember this? I, I mean, I set this up a lot for you guys. If I have F prime, uh, that would give me F double prime, and that would give me F. Right? If we took the derivative of F, that would give me F prime. If we took the derivative of F prime, that would give me F double prime. Now, if F, what is F prime? Speed. Yes, I heard speed. So he is speed. There's other words for that. Uh, rate, uh, instantaneous rate of change, or you can say velocity. Lots of different words for this uh, this f prime, right? Okay, uh, if I take the antiderivative of this, that means I go backwards. What does the f represent? Distance. Ooh, distance. If you're talking about speed, that would, be, that would be distance, right? Okay, but what if we're just talking about rate? Like right, right, right here, we have water flow. If you go backwards, then this would be amount. Amount is the same idea as distance. The amount of miles. Okay, um, and then we don't need this yet, but uh, F double prime, what would that one be? Acceleration. Acceleration. This is the rate of the rate changing. <laughs> okay, so what would this mean? I just took the antiderivative of capital R, and we just said earlier that capital R is the same as F prime. So what's my answer? What are the units for it? Is it gallons per, per hour? It's just gallons. Oh, very nice. So this is gallons. And what does this mean in context? This is how many gallons poured out of whatever's, you know, the pipe in 24 hours. Okay, 25 or 258.6 <coughs> gallons in 24 hours have come out of the pipe. Of, well, I'm running out of space. <laughs> now, letter B says, is there some time uh, between 0 and 24 hours that R prime equals 0? Justify your answer. Now, R prime, uh, remember, we're, we're at R right here. R prime would be the rate of the rate. Now, we don't really care that it's acceleration. And we don't really need to know that to answer this problem. But how do we uh, know... Um, if the slope, because that's what this represents, uh, R prime represents the slope, the slope of these points that I'm graphing right here has a, uh, a slope of zero somewhere. So where, where might there be a slope of zero? Now if I just connect these points right here, actually let's use a different color. Uh, if I connect these points right here, you notice we go up, then we go back down. I kind of miss some of the points, but the point is this point and this point are the same height. Because those two points are the same height, it is common sense. It makes, maybe it's not common sense, but it makes sense that there would have to be a point, and it looks like this one right here, that would have a slope of zero. There's something called, um, there's a theorem. There's a theorem called Rolle's theorem that states that. So we can say, uh, yes, because of Rolle's theorem. Actually, um, I think it'd be more proper to say, now, Rolle's theorem is a form of MVT, mean value theorem. Um, I'll, actually, I can leave that right there. Uh, I think we should say because um, R of, what is that, R of zero? Yeah, R of zero equals R of 24 Rolle's theorem claims that there exists 
a t such that r prime of t equals 0. So you're just pretty much saying that there is a slope that equals 0 somewhere. Okay, finally, our last question, uh, let's see, it says, the rate of water flow RT can be approximated by this, so now they're giving us an equation for R. Use Q to approximate the average, ooh, that should be a keyword, average rate of water flow. Okay, so to find the average, we're going to do something, uh, like we're going to do this integral, uh, we'll do it of Q of T, is it T? Yeah, Q of T, DT. And we'll go from 0 to 24, and we'll go times um, 0, or 24 minus 0. So we're going to sum up all of the values, and then divide that sum by the distance between 0 and 24. Uh, just like finding a mean average. So we would, um, actually, let's uh, just erase this and put in what Q equals. We have 1 over 79. And then that's multiplying to 768 plus 23t minus t squared dt. And you just got to throw this in your calculator, and we got our answer. All right, let's throw it into our calculator. We have 1 divided by 24, and then we're going to multiply this by the integral. So I'm going to hit math, and then 9, because I want f, n, i, and t. So I'm going to integral from 0 to 24. Now I gotta put all my stuff inside here. Okay, we got one over seventy-nine uh, times six or seven sixty-eight plus twenty-three t minus t squared. One over seventy-nine, one divided by one seventy-nine, multiplying that times. Whoops, not one seventy-nine, just seventy-nine. Gotta get over there and delete that one by hitting the delete button. And then inside my parenthesis right here, 768 plus, what is it, um, 23t minus t squared, 23t minus t squared. Now I'm using x instead of t, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to put an x in there. Let's see what our answer is. 1078, uh, put 10.785, 10.785. Now because we're doing the integral right here, remember our label, this is gallons. Whenever we take, uh, whenever we take the antiderivative of a rate, we're going to get the amount. So here's a rate, take the antiderivative, we should get an amount. All right, indicate units of measure, got that. All right, that's it.